Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther. So today it's overcast and it's going to rain in about three hours and this is the perfect day for transplanting seedlings because you don't have to block them from the sun and it's going to rain so the seedlings will get extra moisture after you've transplanted them. It really is the perfect time to do transplants. So I have <laughs> my poor parsley fell over but I have some parsley that I started indoors. I have some lettuces. This is green ice lettuce and red fire lettuce that I start that I winter sowed so winter sowing is starting your seedlings outdoors and things like milk jugs I also have one of my favorite lettuces from last year Pablo lettuce and then I have some that I started indoors the marvel of four seasons lettuce it's a really beautiful red leaf lettuce I was also out here two weeks ago and I transplanted a bunch of strawberries uh, before I went on my trip and I cleaned up those beds. So I'll show you that. And I also direct sowed some carrots, some purple carrots, uh, seeds, and I direct sowed some pea seeds and sugar snap pea seeds. And then today, if I have time, I'm going to be direct sowing some, some beets and some radishes. And then I invested over the winter, I invested in a regular five tier green stock, which is those, uh, you'll see in a second, but it's those planters. So I bought some potting mix I've got here <laughs> to fill up the uh, planters. And if you'll see over here in this area, this is sort of an area, whoops, there goes my parsley again. Over here in this area, this is an area I kind of just throw my weeds um, when I'm weeding and then I'll take them to the other thing. But Nothing really grows here because it's like a plastic tarp underneath from the original gardener that had this plot. So I'm actually going to put my green stock right here in the center. So the sun comes from this direction and it goes this way. And so putting a green stock here will be perfect for all the plants to get some sun. So first of all, I'm not affiliated with green stock in any way. Uh, this is just for myself. I filled up each of the tiers with potting mix. I used Gardner's Gold potting mix. And you really are supposed to be using their watering system. See that disc in the middle where the water kind of comes from the top and waters all of the different layers, the different tiers. But my water is quite dirty because I pull it from the creek. It has leaves and other debris in it. I'll have to use something to filter the water, maybe a, a stocking, a nylon hose or something when I fill up these containers to water it all the way down this summer. But for today, when I was putting this up, I just wanted to make sure the soil was plenty moist ahead of me transplanting these seedlings in. So I kind of skipped a step in that I directly watered the spots where I transplanted them. But overall, um, I like this so far. It's a pretty good process. All right, here I am transplanting some of my lettuce seedlings. And you can see you put them kind of near the edge and you do need to kind of add a lot of potting mix because as you know, if you've done winter sowing, it reduces in size when it gets wet. So I did keep adding potting mix to this as it got wet. And I'm kind of glad I moistened things as I went because I thought that was a good way to know kind of that the potting mix will be high enough up for the seedlings. So I put lettuce and parsley on the bottom layer. It's the second tier I did carrot seeds and the third tier I did beet seeds and then I did lettuce on the fourth tier and I haven't put anything on the fifth tier yet. I haven't quite decided what to put there. This is one of my two garlic beds that I planted in the fall and there were some bulbs that didn't come up and I'd read somewhere that you can plant lettuce in between garlic bulbs so I thought why don't I fill in these gaps with a couple of my lettuce seedlings and we'll see how it goes. It'll be fun as an experiment to see how they work together. I'm also down to the last of my winter sowing. I have a few tomato varieties I need to sow today um, and I have some flowers that I haven't gotten to yet but everything else has been winter sown. Now I only want really one tomato plant from each of these so I'm going to do what I don't normally do but I've done a couple times this year which is do four varieties per jug. So I'm going to do African Togo which is good in heat, it's a prolific producer and I just love like the lobed design here. Um, Dwarf Emerald Giant. This is a green tomato and it's a disease resistant. Helani, which is a um, resistant to hot weather. It's meant to improve on another disease resistant. They're six to eight ounce red tomatoes. And then I have Bernas Saj Art Colors Mix. When I'm doing four varieties I will just take two of the yogurt strips and I'll make it so they can go over each other create a sort of cross like that 
doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be enough to delineate, which is where African Togo. I'm going to put just two seeds per... Just two seeds per section. Uh-oh, did I drop one? Where'd it go? There it went. Okay. For this last one, because the seeds are from 2021, I'm gonna actually gonna put four seeds in here. sometimes happens my microphone stopped working so this is what I have set out I have a few more jugs to put out as I mentioned poor Lilo over here had surgery recently so she's wearing the cone of shame as you can see she's not happy about it but we've had a good number of things sprouted and um, I'll show you some highlights of how things are doing the collards and Ethiopian kale are doing well I need to transplant those this week or next week and the cabbage late flat and the asparagus are both doing great now i keep the lid on them during the daytime because it keeps the cabbage loper butterfly from laying her eggs on them and i need to transplant these up soon as well i have a number of tomatoes that have been sprouting this is gujarat's village and i can't remember the other kind but they both seem to be coming along pretty well this is the apricot foxglove you can see there's some baby seedlings in here that just sprouted in the last week or so we have one butterfly pea seedling that looks like it's doing well um, be glad to grow that this year. Last year, my seedlings didn't do well. Then we have the cornflowers or bachelor's buttons. And this is the same jug where the nasturtium got killed by frostbite. But I'm glad the jug is at least still going to use. And the cornflowers need to be transplanted up soon because they can handle the frost. These are my poppies. Two of the jugs. And this is my service berry bush, which has bloomed. You can see in the background that tulips have also bloomed. They're kind of nearing the end of their time. And let's look, the blooms are starting to turn into little berries for the service berry. I recently went to a nursery and bought some ferns to transplant into my backyard, into my full shade bed. So I hope to do that within the next week or so. So yeah, there's a lot of transplanting going on. I've also got my iris is about to bloom here, this purple iris that's from my uncle's garden. And you can see the tulips here in the front yard haven't bloomed yet, which just shows probably that having that fenced enclosed area in the backyard keeps that area warmer so they bloom sooner. Over here is where the calendula that I grew starting indoors transplanted out about two weeks ago out here in these beds, as well as these little violas that are just so pretty. So, so pretty. And then uh, I also have a marigold plant over here. And it looks like yeah, it looks like there's a bud here forming, so we may actually have our first marigold flower in the next week or two. So overall, I think things are going pretty good for the spring. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.